Hello, so uh, this is Joel from Sinoid, and uh, today I'm going to be making a tutorial uh, per, as per request by uh, a fan of ours named uh, Zach, Zach Pridemore. And um, I'm going to go over how uh, I managed to make these uh, very hard death step kind of uh, dubstep uh, growls and machine guns and um, over here I uh, created a, a growl it sounds something like this right now it's filtered uh, I don't know if you can hear that quite well but um, it sounds it sounds very very much uh, saturated and uh, nasty, uh, and uh, I'm gonna go over really quick the steps, the proper steps, and and some uh, I guess some of the uh, base science that goes behind uh, creating uh, these sounds uh, from scratch. So I'm gonna try my best and imitate. Uh, this patch right here. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and include these patches uh, just so that you can get a taste of um, somewhat of, of you know how how this uh, this is made. You can play with it and, and figure out you know how you want to make it and change it up and whatnot. Um, so here we go. I'm gonna start a new instance of Massive. And uh, pretty much um, the way I'm, I'm going to give it as, as a step-by-step -step process uh, to make it easy. So step one: choose your oscillator. Now, it, with these with these patches that I made, I just uh, chose to use only one oscillator. But you are not limited to just utilizing one. In fact, and when it comes to sound design. Um, you're not, you can, you don't really have to play by the rules, although it, it does help to learn them and then learn how to break them. Um, but yeah, so I like to use Strontium a lot. Strontium, uh, is just the wavetable of Strontium is just very much catered towards making these nasty, uh, Reese kind of sounds used in Death Step. And um, I, I would say get to know every single one of these sounds. You know, Strontium, Chrome, Scrapyard, Wicked, Bronze. Those are just uh, some of the very few that you can get these sounds out of them quite easily. Now, <clears throat> when you first um, initialize these sounds and you play a bass note, I would say like, you know, F is, is one of the most common bass notes used in dubstep. Um, I'm, I would dare say one of the many favorites of anybody who makes deep bass music. Um, you play the note, and uh, if I can get the sound out, that'd be great. Uh, let's see what's going on right now. Here we go. Yeah, if you leave it in spectrum. This mode here, you get you get a, a couple modes here. You don't really get, um, I would say, the best sound out of Strontium. Even though by nature it, it's sounding great already if you have the intensity all the way up, but I like to use the bend mode. You get a much more saturated sound by stock, you know, you, you, all, you, you don't really have to do much. Well, you just put in this mode and it's like instant gooderizer. And um, I like to do the intensity all the way down because um, if you put it on, on the left, since this is bend negative positive, you get a, a lower pitch and then you get a higher pitch with the positive. So it's like, it's like, a, it's like a pitch wheel 
and uh, you want to, you know, lower the better because, you know, it's base. So then um, this wavetable position, what, that's what WT means in case you didn't know that, um, in case you were asking, I guess, what that is, WT, wavetable. These oscillators are just preset uh, samples created by native instruments that are loaded into the, the knob and it's kind of like if you had a sampler and you just saw a waveform and you, and you just you just want to use a certain wave a part of that waveform so you choose the position of where you want to initialize that sample that's preloaded so I like leaving it there and um, and yeah I mean that's pretty much step one it's like choose an oscillator choose your sound and choose uh, the, the mode. This is the typical, um, one of my, my go-to ways of, uh, methods of uh, starting out with a bass for a growl or whatnot. Next, uh, what I do is I put up the voices. I, I like to add voices. And um, now, if once you add voices, you're gonna notice that you're, 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 you're gonna get a much stronger signal as compared to when you have only one. Now, once I add four, you're gonna get some more voices in there, some some chorusing, but you don't want that for a bass. So what I do is I set the restart via gate, and what this does is that instead of having a chorusing effect, it's gonna put all the um, all the uh, I would say voices. So it's kind of like instead of have, having one of these guys singing, you got four guys singing, and you. But now, instead of having them chorus and and uh, kind of comb filter and detune from each other, you're gonna have them all uh, sound the same. And that's when you get the spike in signal because since they're all in phase now, um, they 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 increase in, in volume. Now you want to put this down. Now the great part about this is not now you get an even more saturated, um, uh, a more saturated uh, nature in this sound. And when you when you mess with the wet wave table, it's like you already got a perfect growl out of it. Now, however, that's um, we can still improve it, so it's not necessarily too perfect. So um, next step. So first step, choose your oscillator, choose your uh, wavetable, set it in the right mode, set it in the right wavetable and intensity settings, uh, amp all the way up, send it to the first filter, put this in serial so it goes into the second filter, or you could you can mix and match whatever to, uh, as it you know per taste. And um, next. I saturate it with tube saturation. This is a classic tube. Tube saturation allows to create uh, distorted harmonics within your sound, per, um, mostly in the in the in the mid and, and high frequencies. Can't really hear it too well uh, in this right here, but when you let's let's, let's put it here move it around now we add the, the tube saturation and it's you get a little more grains in there and uh, they're really gonna stand out once you add some more distortion they're gonna get emphasized um, although this is a base uh, dimension expander gives it a good um, it allows for for it to sound a bit more full put too much of it because uh, I mean I, fe I feel that uh, as a bass uh, even though it's a, it's, a, it's gonna be a mid bass we're gonna uh, usually take out the subs from this sound it, do it does help create a, f a full uh, give it a fullness but I don't like adding too much uh, spatial elements because then then you kind of lose some definition in, in the growl itself so I leave it right around there and it sounds pretty good to me. I EQ a bit. I take I, I put 
frequency usually around like 10 o'clock and uh, and I take out some of the mids now it sounds even more guttural because it emphasizes the, the, the low end and the higher frequency harmonics in the in the higher end of the spectrum allow for 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 you to just kind of feel that oh man that that sounds a lot more deep and and then you can automate this and make it sound uh, like it's talking a bit more and then you can add some bump in the shelf the high shelf and get some more like uh, high end on that sounds pretty nasty there all right after that um, we go ahead I go ahead and, and um, I add a sign shaper Add to, you add to taste. And uh, then we can add some parabolic there. Sounds pretty nasty. So yeah, um, that's a part of the process. Uh, I, I put I put this on monophonic since it's gonna be a bass. We're not really gonna chord this. Polyphonic means that uh, to put it in a mode in which you can play multiple notes for the sound. Monophonic is a mode in which you're only gonna play one key at a time. Uh, usually with with basses, you don't chord them. If not, they sound they don't sound too good, especially with the with the way we're uh, creating this uh, sound. So um, monophonic is good, especially when you when you start putting in the MIDI. It doesn't um, you, it it allows for smoother transitions, especially when you put the glide time here uh, at, at this setting. So uh, that's good there. Uh, adding some some tape hiss or bright noise enables this to sound a bit more uh, full as well. Yeah, there's a bit of a difference there. And um, finally, uh, we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, add some filters which is one of the most important parts as well as uh, uh, messing with the wavetable position so now uh, I like using scream it's just enough you know just stacking distortion on this sound uh, allows for for you to really get the most out of uh, this wavetable Add some resonance on that, add scream to right about there. And uh, you already got a great sound going with, with pretty much these settings here. And um, I love the double notch. Uh, the double notch essentially is what it, what it says there. It's basically... Uh, a graphic I mean, a parametric EQ with two dips in it and uh, once you move the cutoffs it just allows for talking to ensue so usually add a mono LFO on it we're on a mono we're making a mono sound so uh, that's why I, I usually add the mono then you I put it on a um, one bar I take off some of the amp on it some of the amplitude on it so it's, it's basically like a mix knob you can move this um, waveform here and dictate where it, uh, when will it move left and right so it's essentially the LFO is doing this to a knob, and this is the nature of it. You can change it to be a sawtooth, a square, a triangle, but uh, I usually go for sine waves or you know some natural sounding uh, LFOs. 
and um, they're smooth too, so um, that's why I, I usually use them. If I need to go for something a bit more hard, like uh, unnatural, I use these. Or you could use any of these presets. I suggest uh, experimenting with them and uh, you learn how, how to best use them. Now, uh, I, I also like to yeah, add some on the wavetable here, on the, on the positioning. You know, you can really uh, get some crazy sounds out of it, and and you you know, once you learn how to, what what these uh, do essentially, and and you you just practice, you really get to know how to get certain sounds or, or how to do certain things by really understanding what the envelopes do and the LFOs and. Um, if you follow these steps that I've shown you, you should be good in creating any sound uh, as long as you just keep at it. I like adding envelopes on top of um, the LFOs because you, you, you really get a... Um, I feel like you, you actually get in, in between frequencies. You, you, you allow for certain frequencies to, to pop in there in the movement of the sound that wouldn't normally be there if you were to just add only one LFO onto it. So you, you get this, uh, uh, you add some harmonics into that, into that growl. And you can, you can really hear that come through uh, once you, you just stack it. Uh, the intensity, you can leave it there. You can you leave it wherever you like. I suggest leaving it in the negative side because it's going to emphasize the low end uh, frequencies there. And um, detuning. Now, there is a detune knob here. Uh, this is a detune. The problem with this is that you're going to get some hardcore phaser effects with it. Reason for that? You got um, all these, you have the restart gate on it. So if you unclick that, then you, you won't have that anymore. And essentially you dictate the phase of uh, oscillator one there. You, you, you dictate um, when, when do you want it to start. This especially comes through. Sometimes it, it really does affect the sound itself by itself, even if you you're only using one oscillator. Um, but when you stack on more, which I, I would suggest you experiment and, and you can you can do that instead of staying with with one wavetable. Um, but yeah, this this allows you to really uh, color the sound. It makes you can even change the nature of the sound and the way it sounds just by dictating where what position. You know, if you if you take in any math, any trigonometry or pre-cal, you, you know exactly how uh, sine waves work and and um, the positioning of them with zero, ninety, one eighty, two seventy, three sixty. I hated math, but but there's one thing I got out of it was understanding what this is. Um, and uh, essentially, yes, I I don't want this to be stereo. Um, you it doesn't mean you you can't uh i sometimes do uh mess with the stereo image but for the stock main bass sounds in your music i suggest leaving it a mono um and i feel like the the to the fullness this dimension expander adds uh, enough stereo um stereoness if you would uh to the stock sound that doesn't mean you can't stock, uh, stack on other uh, stereo sounds of this type, uh, of this uh, patch. Uh, I actually do that. I will usually layer like three to four um, of the same sound, tweak it, change the stereo uh, positioning of it, and uh, 
and just change it and, and make make sure it doesn't have any phase issue when you when you monitor it in um, in a mono uh, mode. And uh, and yeah, I mean, there there are you can bend the rules very much. Just you know, learn them first. And then lastly, um, go ahead and and detune this a bit. You're gonna notice that it's gonna get a lot grosser when you do that. And actually, a little a little secret that I learned is that when you when you have this restart gate on, and you detune from here manually. You're gonna notice that the movement of the sound now is being manipulated. Now, if I were to change this to just 0.30, which is a sweet spot, 0.30 and 0.70 are, are, are sweet spots in pitch. That is a completely different movement compared to when it was at zero. And then if I even add it to 70, suddenly it just wants to go insane and it's moving everywhere. So this pitch uh, a parameter here, you can mess with it, mess with it on the sound, mess with it here in the modulation. Um, this ring modulation, it really, uh, it kind of, uh, it really pulls through when you have a restart on the, on the sound and, and you're manipulating the phases of each, um, you're just manipulating the phase and this ring modulate, modulator really helps with uh, that manipulation of the phase and then uh, it helps you uh, really fine-tune the movements of your growls in in this particular uh, style of, of sound the the further away these values are from each other uh, at least in this sound this in this patch uh, the more movement you get so uh, just realize that this ring modulator really helps with uh, moving the bases a lot. And you're pretty much done with this sound. I mean, I, I tried my best to emulate the original. Uh, you can add envelopes to this too. So this is essentially um, uh, the patch. Uh, w one last thing I forgot was the position. This is just uh, add that to taste. It, it, it does affect the sound a bit and does give it a, a bit of a difference there. So I think we pretty much nailed the, the growl. I think they're, they're kind of similar. Let's see how this one sounds. I didn't even look at it, so let's see how what's the difference. It's a bit different, uh, but essentially this is kind of the same in nature a bit. Um, I'll make sure to I'll include this patch as well, what we just made here. So uh, no biggie. And. Uh, I'm going to make this a two-part video, so I'll see you in part two for the machine gun-based tutorial.